This Week on Crossfeed. Missionaries and the Dollar. Teacher fired for wizardry. The real crystal skull. Designer babies, a reality? What gimmicks are your churches using? Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Crossfeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, Pastor of St. Paul Lutheran Church in Delaware, Iowa. I am Pastor Jim Butler uh, from St. Luke's Lutheran Church in Dedham, Massachusetts, just outside of Boston. You may dispense with the pleasantries, Commander. Welcome, everybody. And we're having a little uh, um, fun tonight uh, with the uh, connection. Uh, you'll notice Dale speeds up all of a sudden as the, the, the packets catch up. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's like um, uh, digital amphetamines. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and you notice too, he's a little bit uh, blurred and, and blocky there too. His picture, which according to him, is good because he feels blurred and blocky. So, um, <laughs> so yeah. <sighs> hey, it's Trinity Sunday. Trinity Sunday. So it won't be by the time people get this. But nope. Happy Trinity Sunday late. <laughs> I got a phone call from my uh, uh, secretary. She was setting up for the, she was getting the bulletin ready and stuff. And uh, third Sunday of the month, we always do matins, which doesn't have a creed in it. And um, it's Trinity Sunday, so we do the Athanasian Creed. And she says, um, where am I supposed to put the creed? <laughs> Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. My secretary's wonderful. <laughs> and, uh, so I said, oh, put it with the Tadeum, or instead of the Tadeum, because that's the, that's the creed in Matins. So. So, no, we had our confirmation today. We had, we confirmed three kids, and, um, that was a very joyful and, 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 and good service. But with that, um, Old Testament reading that went on forever, I just used the Nicene Creed. <laughs> Commission on Worship the LCMS. Why could you be so stupid if they have such a long Old Testament and long uh, Acts reading today? I mean, by the time the Acts reading was over, I think half the congregation was asleep. But, do you see that? Now, okay, anybody that's not Missouri Synod is, like, falling asleep right now. But, um, the, you know, we have the lessons printed out on the on little insert in the bulletin, right? So if it, a half sheet, so, you know, five and a half by eight and a half, okay? And you've got Genesis 1, 1 through 2, 4, and then what was the Acts lesson? I don't know, 20, 36 to 42 or something like that. It was, yeah, but it, so it was, it was fairly long. And, um, and then the, but, and by the time you fit that, and the gospel lesson, I think it was like in about, oh, six point type. <laughs> I mean, it was just tiny. Trying to squeeze all that on. That should have been a clue. Yeah, even my daughter's standing here nodding at me. <laughs> yeah, like, trying to read that stuff. You know, and we're talking with our congregation. Probably half of our members prefer large print <laughs> instead of need a microscope. So, oh man, yeah, that was. It's, anytime you have to go below ten point type to get it all on there, the lessons are too long. All right. Um, it was not one of their smarter ideas to um, take out the um, what was that reading from? Um, oh, it was second at the end of Second Corinthians. It was the apostolic benediction. They pulled that to put that um, Acts reading in there, uh, which it's one of those that's the same reading every year. So after a while, it gets a little tiresome. But <clears throat> oh well, that's why I print my own. I think I'll just change that in the future and just do it my own do it my own darn way and make myself happy. So, well, I and pl- I preached long today too. I was told, um, not by somebody who was complaining. Oh yeah, my daughter's nodding her head about that one too. <laughs> oh, she said she timed me. It was twenty minutes, <laughs> over twenty minutes. <laughs> Great. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I had somebody come up to me who used to be a member of Pentecostal church. He says, Pastor, that was kind of, that was kind of long for, uh, 
for a Missouri Synod sermon. Now, if you're a Pentecostal, you'd just be getting warmed up. <laughs> Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. Well, you know, Dale, that's your new gimmick for getting people to come in. Long sermons. <laughs> this is madness. You know, I've put that on the you know the signboard outside, you know, place where you you put all the like goofy slogans and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> come here for long sermons. <laughs> Our sermons go on forever. <laughs> when will this insanity end? This is an article from uh, the Wichita Eagle. And uh, I was talking about some of these. Now, I don't know if anybody here listening to this ever uh, read The Wittenberg Door. Um, but it's kind of a. At its heyday, it was this great Christian satirical magazine. I think it's gone downhill since uh, you specialty stopped doing it. But they, they used to have a section called Truth is Stranger Than Fiction, in which they would often, you know, kind of poke fun at um, some of these things that uh, churches did in order to get people to come. And, uh, and, and, and visit them and things. So, uh, but they're talking about some churches down there in Wichita. Uh, one that has a, um, Bonanza Bible study. And, uh, another one that had a, uh, Biker Sunday. Which I've actually, I've heard, the, I've heard of a couple of Lutheran churches actually doing Biker Sundays. Well, they have the, the blessing of the bikes. Mm-hmm. There was, uh, there was one here in Iowa, uh, I think it was last week. And, uh, and, uh, there was one up in Wisconsin I read about too. Right. Well, there was one, uh, uh, one of our sister churches in our circuit had a blessing to the bikes and then they had a uh, cookout and then they went riding to the Blue Hills for a while. Um, so I, you know, I've heard of that. Um, but, um, and, uh, so that was one thing. Another church, uh, the First Salem United Church of Christ, um, doing a monthly Bonanza Bible study that focuses on Bible lessons that can be learned from watching Bonanza. Yeah. Well, we have uh, Hope Community Church in Andover, and the picture here is Pastor Steve Weldon. Um, who it, I was looking at their church website. I was looking at their staff pages, and they define pastor differently than we do because they've got like a half a dozen pastors. They've got pastor of... Middle school youth ministry, pastor of high school youth ministry, and so they use the word pastor the way we would use something like director. Mm-hmm. So that was a little confusing, but they've got these goofy, um, you know, the, I think they're supposed to be biker things, but they look like mechanics. Let us change into our makeup and costumes. Oh, we get to play dress up. Can I wear this bunny costume? Yeah, but yeah, they had a biker Sunday. Which, you know, which doesn't, the, the other group was, um, the other one that has this West Link uh, uh, Christian Church, which um, has a 50,000 square foot area uh, for teens, elementary school, children, video games, pool tables, and a cafe. I'm pretty uh, um, impressed by that. You know, these aren't too gimmicky. You know, there's churches that do, I think, a lot worse. Uh, there's one church that was offering 10 bucks for everybody who came to visit their church one Sunday. Um, then there was, uh, my favorite one, of course, was uh, where the pastor said he would uh, uh, kiss a pig if they got uh, so many kids in Sunday school. Yeah. On the lips? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think my wife would object to that. <laughs> <laughs> I would too. Yeah, and then I remember the the pastor <laughs> preaching from the, the from the church roof. If they got you know so many people, he'd stand up and preach from the church roof or something like that. Yeah, which you know it really gets kind of gimmicky. Um, yeah, I especially mean, when the people start going jump, <laughs> jump. <laughs> but I thought some of these were, were were I don't know about the bonanza Bible study. Of course, I never liked the bonanza. You know. <laughs> I just don't know that Lauren Green has that much to say. But yeah, what, I like him better as a dama. Yeah. yeah. Well, of course, what what, what um, got me about that was <laughs> the gospel heard to Haas and Little Joe. Um, but but what what I thought was interesting about that is a church that has what 
30 people on a Sunday morning, they have 20 people in this Bible study? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Higher percentage than most churches. Yeah, although I, I'd be curious with churches that small, you figure that you're probably going to get a pretty decent you know, percentage because you know, most churches have like, what, 10% show up for Bible study? So, um, you know, <laughs> we get, well, let's see, we had... Uh, you got 30 people on Sunday morning, 10% show up. Well, of course, we had three this morning. <laughs> we usually get about five or six, so do which we, is about 10% for us. Do we generally have about 15 to 20, but uh, with people doing weekends at the Cape and stuff, it's settling down a little bit right now. Um, although there must be a misprint in this. Because uh, Pastor John Warner of First Salem United Church of Christ says, it's just the things that unfortunately happened in the 50s and 60s, they're just not working anymore. And I'm just not sure exactly, because gist is whatever worked earlier isn't working today. Um, but then that's we, we have a different group out there, too. i got to work on my game. Now, there's people you know, who just need to be reached in different ways. And a little bit more hardcore unchurched, I think, today than they than they, maybe they were 50 years ago. Yeah. No, here's the question, though. All right. There's two different ways to do this. If you want to do some kind of gimmicky thing, all right, just to attract people, just to get them in the door, you know. And, you know, the understanding is here that hopefully they'll come and then once you get them in the door, that they'll hear the gospel. Um and and then hopefully they'll they'll go oh wow there's a lot more here than what I was actually coming for, um, you know you got to be careful that you don't make it a bait and switch, you know that they're coming for one thing and it's like oh well you know that's pretty lame and and you know what they're offering otherwise is even worse, um, but you know the the thing that I look at is um, while I don't have a problem with using gimmicks as as far as like uh community events you know like for instance uh we talked about it kind of fell through but uh, we were talking about doing a block party for the community um that it, it wasn't a necessarily going to be a sun we actually think about it as a sunday afternoon mm-hmm. thing um and uh you know right after the service maybe invite people to to the service if they want to come but you know even if they don't come to service come to the block party after it just as a way to um to have people from the community get to know our members. And uh, since we have people coming from outside of town and stuff, and also just to say, hey, we're part of this community. We care about you. Um, you know, you don't have to be a member of our church for us to care about you. Mm-hmm. Um, because I don't want it to be just about getting, you know, as the expression is used, butts in the pews, right? Um, you know, the idea is to let people know, hey, God loves you. We love you. And, um, you know, yeah, we'd like to have you here, but not so that we can, you know, have big numbers, but rather because we care about you and we want you to know this amazing love that God has for you. And, um, you know, so I've, I've thought about different things. Here's, here's something that, that I've been really wanting to do. And I think we're at the point now um, as a, in technology that we can pull it off. I'm not sure I could pull it off around here, um, but I think in a slightly larger community it could probably be done. And that is a, um, a, a video game tournament because Wii's are getting so popular now. Um, and, I mean, they're using them in nursing homes and everything. And, and I was thinking something like that where you have people and you play, like, you know, some of these sports games and stuff like that, that I could see that really going over well. You know, just to, you know, if nothing else to, to say, and you'd have, you know, like maybe some small prizes, but none of these, like, it really bothers me when churches are, like, giving raffling off a car or something like that. Um, but, you know, just have some, some little prizes, um, uh, maybe something either donated by the church or, or donated, uh, sometimes area, um, businesses and that'll give away some, you know, coupons or something like that. And, um, and so you, you could have something like that, but people are going to come mostly just for the fun and, um, you know, have some snacks out there and stuff and just have a good time just to let people know, you know, here's a place that's, that first of all, to find out where the place is. And then just to to let people know, hey, yeah, there's there's some great people here. Mm-hmm. You know, come and, and get to know them. And and then when you come and get to know them, you're gonna hear about 
what's so great about these people, and, and that is uh, what God has done for them. Just to um, um, talk about bait and switch, I don't know if you remember the old LCMS Friendship Sunday stuff, but I always laughed every year. They put out this, this service that was unlike anything else you did the rest of the year. And I always thought it was, a, you know, just a real bait and switch because you did this thing that was not like anything else you did the rest of the year. And you go, hey, I really like this. And they come in the next week and it's like, this is what they did last week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I always thought a little bit of bait and switch, so I understand that. But uh, You know, I try to do those things like, oh, what, probably three different times and um, at, at two different churches. And it never worked. I mean, I think between those three services, I think we had, oh, maybe a half a dozen total guests, period. And, um, and, and some of them were like, I know at least one of them was one of our kids had a friend sleep over or something like that the night before. And <laughs> so she came to church with us the next morning and <laughs> that was, that was it. <laughs> So, but I always I remember those servers. They used to come out of those out every year and stuff. I I, I don't I um I know seems everyone needs a gimmick. That's all I can tell you. Isn't that the song from uh, Rose? Everyone needs a gimmick. Or you gotta have a gimmick. That's it. You gotta have a gimmick. Hey, I got a neat gimmick. How about a crystal skull? <laughs> Bring in a crystal skull and, you know, hey, that'll bring in people. So, if you haven't heard of it, what rock you've been hiding under? Um, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. New Indiana Jones movie. Harrison Ford is getting way too old for Indiana Jones movies. Um, but, hey, I heard this on another uh, podcast. You can, if you play Lego Star Wars, the, um, the, the, the full, uh, the, the new full one for the Wii, you can unlock Indiana Jones so that you can have, you can play two player and you can have Han Solo and Indiana Jones side by side. <laughs> Just a little surreal there. Dude, we're in trouble. That cracked me up. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a completely unrelated note. Um, anyway. Yes, but, um, but it, it, it's the, the newest Indiana Jones movie, of course, the Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Uh, and apparently, the Crystal Skull is a real thing. Yep. Yep. Now, the first first movie, Raiders of the Lost Ark, was based on the Ark of the Covenant, which is a real thing. Um, the second one, uh, Temple of Doom, I don't think that there's any I, I'd never heard of, of, of any actual like those three stones that there actually being anything to that um, and then no the th but when I was in seminary one, remember did, did you have Horace Hummel nah he retired like right before I got to him okay yeah we uh, I heard a lot about him yeah we always wanted to have a picture of him in the Indiana Jones outfit standing next to the Luther Tower and you know Indiana Hummel in the Tower of Doom <laughs> I have no idea what that meant. Um, but the Last Crusade, supposedly, I guess it wasn't the last one. Um, but uh, that was based on the Holy Grail, which is also uh, fictional, uh, <laughs> um, unless you're. Is it Roman Catholicism? Or do they even? I don't even know. The Holy Grail Any is Roman the Catholics part of out there. No. Oh. The Holy Grail is part of our theory and legend. Unless, of course, you believe in the Da Vinci Code, in which case, you know, the Holy Grail was uh, Mary Magdalene, so... Mary Magdalene. <laughs> However, I never so, I mean, even heard of this um, legend of the Chris, Chris, Crystal Skull before, uh, till you shot this article up on there. Yeah, it turns out that there's actually a, a Mayan cult. Um, called the the cult of the crystal skull, and uh, it's a uh, yeah. They say there's thirteen the crystal skulls, which, when united, hold the power to save the earth.
there's the there's a skull purportedly found at a Mayan ruin in 1924. It's called the Skull of Doom, but they can't prove that it's the real thing. There's a lot of this this cult. They use crystal skulls, but they're fakes. They're they're not the actual ones that date back to whatever. Right. They they can't date them back any further than 1860s. Um, basically, what happened was is that's when Europe kind of went through and uh, um, kind of looted everything because Hispanic relics or pre-Hispanic relics were really you know considered to be cool or pre-Columbian mm-hmm. relics probably. And um, but uh, they can't find it. But um, yeah, the skulls were made by the Maya the Mayans uh, somewhere between three and nine hundred A.D. But no crystal skull has ever been excavated from a documented archaeological site. And some believe they can emit and focus light, project visions, and even influence terrestrial forces. Controlling the weather or something. But uh, since they can't find any, (laughs) there's not much they can do about it. On the other hand, uh, uh, Jane McLaren Walsh at the Smithsonian Institute doubts the ancient Mayans ever had any such skulls. There never was much hope. Yeah, but the... uh, Just a fool's hope. Uh, The Kin Garcia, uh, who is a priest, or the son of their most respected elder, um... He believes the skull has special powers, including the ability to stave off sickness and deforestation in the rainforest uh, where they still live. (laughs) It's not working anywhere else, that's for sure. (laughs) He says, when I'm alone at night, at about 2 a.m., it starts to glow, it emits light, and stays like that for a minute. Sounds like a lava lamp. (laughs) See, now we're going to get nasty comments on YouTube <laughs> from from Mayan crystal skull cultists. <laughs> you know, we really, if we're going to pick on a group, we should really be picking on the Amish because they're not going to be watching us on YouTube. <laughs> oh, no, give you the little skull, <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, they just lob it around. <laughs> Move around. <clears throat> hey, I mean, we got this yeah. comment that, uh, on one of our YouTube videos this week that said, I hate Christians. So, you know. And... Well, I didn't see that one. <laughs> we got that one. <laughs> you know, how much worse can we get here, you know? But, uh. <laughs> Your hate has made you powerful. So he doesn't enjoy our show, or he, it's a, <laughs> it's, it just proves his point. Yeah, my, my other favorite one here was uh, jo- Joshua, Illinois, Shapiro, uh, a 53 a self-described crystal skull explorer. And he says, I personally feel that the skulls are coming out now because humanity needs the information, their energy. And they probably have their own purpose, why they're coming out to help us create world peace. Maybe the human race deserves to be wiped out. Um, just the fact that he uses the name of a state as his nickname, it just it just eliminates his, all of his credibility completely. Well, I think it's kind of yeah. He gets well, he believes that these uh, link us to the knowledge of the past world, like the Mayans, the lost civilization of Atlantis, or even extraterrestrials. I love his quote at the end of this. I was wearing the Indiana Jones hat for a long time. <laughs> Far before they ever thought about putting a crystal skull in an Indiana Jones movie. Oh, well, there you go. So now, now he can sue, the, the, um, you know, Steven Spielberg and, was it Universal that's, that's doing the movie? Paramount. Oh, Paramount, okay. <laughs> he can sue him for, you know, Ripping off the, his his identity, and then they can in turn turn around and sue him and say, uh, "Hello, yeah. um, Illinois. <laughs> That's the dog's name." 
<laughs> yes, it was. Uh, but be that as it may, um, no, I'm actually thinking about the um, about yeah, how different it is that we have a sure word. You know, we don't got to go digging around for crystal skulls in order to have um, God speak to us. God speaks to us in a very sure word. Um, Peter, and in, 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 I think I mentioned a couple weeks ago, um, <clears throat> if I did, go ahead and take your drink now, uh, says, you know, we, uh, we did not follow cleverly devised stories when we told you about uh, his uh, change on the mountain. But, you know, we, you know, but we were there as eyewitnesses and share with you what we have seen and heard. And we have the yeah. word of God made for certain. certain. Oh, very nice, Blaine. Yeah, and and for that matter, we don't have to dig around. You know, the whole thing is he's brought it to us. We don't have to go looking for it. We don't have to find it. Um, you know, he has not only has he brought it to us, he's made sure that it's available to just about anybody. I mean, well. You know, the exception being in, in countries where Christians are persecuted, but even there, you've got, um, you know, black market Bibles and, and things like that, where if people really want to get them, they can. But, I mean, the Bible is the most uh, printed book of all time. So, it's uh, God's really made a point of getting it out there. That's just a tremendous blessing. You know, and the thing is, if you want to go digging... There's plenty of stuff to dig out of the Bible. I mean, man, there's you can there's passages that, that I've read over and over, and every time I read it, I get something new out of it. You know, there's just so much great stuff there, and and you know, there's probably stuff that that you haven't read uh, very closely. You know, if you really want to do something interesting, you know, dig out, uh, <laughs> dig into Leviticus, which you know. Really, it kind of drags. But if you start looking at it, you know, grab some kind of a, a study guide for it and see how all this stuff fits in. I mean, it's amazing stuff. It's not, now, it'd be a little easier to read if they didn't repeat everything. <laughs> and God said, do this, this, and this. And the people did this, this, and this. And God said, do this, this, and that. And the people did this, this, and that. <laughs> all right, we get it. <laughs> Are you saying Moses needed an editor? <laughs> oh. Come on, Aaron. <laughs> yeah. Moving on from the crystal skull, uh, let's talk about the substitute teacher who is a wizard. I got a, a, a picture of him at the trial. We are found the witch. May we burn up? <laughs> it's not you coming out real it? good, unfortunately. Why do you get you fun? It's uh, there's it's the where they are um, they're they're trying to figure out if he's actually a, a wizard or not. Ah, right? the line okay. of reasoning, you know, kind of goes something like, well, um. How do how do you know if if he's a wizard? Well, he floats. Oh, okay. So what else floats? Very small stones. <laughs> wood, wood float. Okay, what else floats? Ducks. <laughs> you know, and you finally end up that, um, you know, she's a duck, or he's a duck, um, or he's made of wood, and um. So, so that's kind of that's that's where we're at. That we're trying to figure out if he's a wizard or not. Okay, it's either that or are you a good witch or a bad witch? <laughs> I'm not a witch at all. Now, this is from Land of Lakes, Florida, and the story is that there um, was a substitute teacher by the name of Jim Coolis, and he did a 30 second magic trick, making a toothpick disappear and then reappear. And then he says he got a call from the supervisor substitute teacher. He says he got to talk to you right away. And uh, you've been accused of wizardry. (laughs) 
for making a toothpick disappear. Now, <clears throat> just before our podcast got uh, going, uh, I happened to be doing some other reading about... I, I happened to come across an, uh, uh, an update on this from Fox News. Uh, I'll send you the link to put up on our uh, that page. And um, they said uh, now that they had gotten 50 phone calls and emails a day from people all over the country just outraged about this. And she said it had nothing to do with him being accused of wizardry, uh, but rather that he um, um, used profane language, couldn't control a classroom, and he put a student in charge. But okay. that the story got overblown when it spread like wildfire over the Internet. Um, <clears throat> and maybe this is a good time to remember what the Eighth Commandment is all about. Be quiet and watch the film. Here's the question, though. Where did this wizardry thing come from in the first place? What did you do with Wicked? Could be he made you know, it up. It, are you incapable of restraining yourself, or do you take pride in being an insufferable know-it-all? You know, I mean, here's the, here's the perfect... It reminded me there's two sides to every story. You know, that, uh, you know, he could just be making it up. The guy never could have had that conversation with him. Of course, when the pro- one of the fun things is... is from the uh, uh, school district side of things, they really can't comment on personnel issues. You know, the fact this mm. woman is willing to even say this uh, says, you know, this is how far it's getting out of port- out of hand. Uh, you know, I mean, he's able to go out and, and tell a story that may or may not be true. Get people all upset um, as this thing, you know, obviously would go out uh, all over the place. Uh, you know, is, uh, you know, especially the Harry Potter fans, I'm sure, were very upset. Uh, somebody being accused of, you know, thrown out for wizardry. And, um, you know, he's able then to uh, ride the publicity. Clearly, fame isn't everything. In the school district, yeah. you know, really not permitted to say anything. Because if, you know, they can now wind up being sued for defamation of character. If he can't get another job because they said he lost control and used profane language, or you've taken away my livelihood. This information cannot leave this room, okay? Mm. It would devastate my reputation as a dude. Interesting. Boy, that, that makes the story even more interesting. <laughs> now, think about it, you know. I mean, you know, here's, here's the, you know, uh, uh, the reminder that always to try, you know, Luca reminding us to always try to put the best construction on everything. And remember, there's two sides to every story. Um, and sometimes I think we, 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 we forget about that. Uh, we get into this attack mode and, you know, we don't, don't think about people. But up oh, here, here it is. Here's the facts. Hmm. So, see, I was thinking that, you know, he could just make a living pulling quarters out of people's ears. <laughs> or rabbits out of hats. I don't know. <laughs> so, you could get rich off the quarters out of the ear thing. If you can find enough of them. Yeah, that could be too. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Boy. Yeah, well, Really took that steam out of that one, man. I know, man. Well, that's what I get for for reading, you know, the thing. Uh, according to the um, the Tampa Bay, uh, uh, Saint Petersburg uh, Tampa Bay Times, they said, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, this thing really did spread all over and got a lot of buzz, and people called her up and called, you know. Calling these people idiots and stupid, and you know, um, you know, uh, one guy is the professor of new media at the Columbia University School of Journalism. Said uh, the teacher is very smart. It was in his interest to spin it the way he did. It's a headline that I would click and read. And obviously, thousands of people across the globe did too. Yeah. Uh- you know, he could have gotten a. He he actually could probably make a pretty good living as a magician. Oh. Yeah, uh, and uh, <laughs> Keith uh, NBC's Countdown with Keith o- Oberman, one of my least favorite shows in the world, 
uh, you know, said the Pasco County School District is one of the three worst persons in the world on May 7th. Uh, you know, most of Florida is in the eastern time zone, but apparently Land of Lakes is the pocket that uses its own clock. Their time zone is apparently the Middle Ages. <laughs> yeah, that's... I mean, the fact that the school can't really, you know, put out an official statement, even what they did, uh, you know, really kind of puts them in a rough spot. But yeah, they had to do something. This is one of those situations where you end up having to get a second phone line and hire a temp just to answer the phone mm-hmm. so that you can conduct regular business. Well, I say we're getting... 40, 50 percent of uh, um, um, you know, 40, 40, 50 emails a day, uh, most of which could not be reprinted in a family newspaper. It was just amazing <laughs> to me how crude and profane people would be without doing any research to find out if there's any fact behind what they had read in an online story out of state. Sounds to me like some of the bloggers and issues, etc. <laughs> There, now, now you stuck your neck out there too, Raven. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I looked at this and figured, well, this is off of a TV news station, you know, and, and it just goes to show that just cause you saw it on TV, even if you saw it on the news, you know, they, it's, it'll attract attention. It's, it got, I'm sure that it, uh, it helped to raise their, uh, their hit count on their website probably got some click throughs in their ads and stuff and, um, and, and worked to their advantage. And, and I mean, let's face it, uh, news reporters not always interested in the truth. You know, um, their job is to make money for their, uh, publication or, uh, news outlet, whatever it happens to be. Yeah, it's interesting. So. You all, uh, uh, and a lot of it got to be the bloggers sending it around. It's interesting. It said that um, that the um, some of the local people down there uh, who dug around in the district files didn't write about them. Hmm. Um, so it just goes to show bloggers and podcasters don't trust them. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, but maybe you can trust a missionary. Which one we're going to go to? Which story? Missionaries. Oh, the falling dollar. Yeah, uh, we. Um, you know, there's been a problem with the, the falling dollar. You know, for 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 some time, um, as it's getting weaker, and that's making things imports more expensive. It, it's it's great for foreigners coming in. I mean, you know, tourism's mm-hmm. at an all-time high. Uh, according to the Wall Street Journal, that's part of the reason oil is so high right now, is the fact that it's denominated in dollars. The dollar is so weak right now that everything's flooding to commodities and boosting up those prices to the hedge against inflation. But there's one group I never thought about getting hit by this, and that was missionaries who serve overseas. Because with the dollar right. being weak, uh, their salaries are not making it. Right. See, a lot of these guys are working over, and by the picture behind me is, is one such missionary um, that is mentioned in the story and, uh, and his family. And what happens is a lot of these guys are working off of endowment funds, and so their salary is the interest from that fund. And so it's a, it's a pretty fixed amount, but it's a fixed amount in American dollars. Well, as the American dollar is worth less and less, it's like uh, – an automatic because they're working overseas. It's it's like uh, their salary just keeps getting reduced and reduced because there's no unless people start filling the endowment fund, which is very difficult to do um, during a recession. They um, and and people aren't thinking it, thinking about it because let's face it, unless you read a story like this, you probably didn't think about it either. I didn't think about it until I saw this. Right. Um, well, a lot of it's not necessarily downs, but money that they raised ahead of time, uh, as they, mm-hmm. you know, this, I mean, that's one of the main ways, you know, they, they raise the money. They, I always love it. They, 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 
they get to come back on, quote, furlough, unquote, you know, which sounds like they're going to have a break. And they spend almost the entire time speaking to different churches across the country to raise money to, to support themselves overseas. Um, yeah. But no, most of us hadn't thought anything about this. I didn't dawn on me till I read the article either uh, that uh, what a struggle that would be. Uh, but uh, a couple of the guys said, you know, this uh, guy, I guess that must be Phil Davis behind you. Uh, mm -hmm. And he says, you know, the, uh, uh, what a what a real difference is that making, uh, especially in poor countries, uh, like in Africa with currencies linked to the euro, the British pound. They're really said feeling it. Um, it, you know, one of them say, uh, you know, but like it'd be, it's like a, a 10 percent pay cut. Yeah, and, and that would be pretty painful. I have to excuse the sound of the train going by behind me. That's fine. But, you know, well, this is something to keep in mind. And, yeah, I mean, a lot of these guys, they raised their money before they went over there, and all of a sudden it's not as much as they thought they had. Right. Well, and, I said, like, uh, um, this one woman, what was her name? Lin Lindsay Hendricks working with Campus Crusade for Christ at Uppsala University in Sweden, uh, said when uh, she raised the money to support herself, is she thought it was going to be $3,600 a month, and now it's closer to $5,000 a month. Uh, her rent has increased $100 since she signed a lease last June. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, just imagine yourself. Think about how much you make a month. Um or how much you make a year, and look at, uh, you know, you're only making 90% of that. How much are you lose it? Mm -hmm. And, you know, you think about a lot of these missionaries, they're not exactly rolling in the money anyway. And then to take a cut like that, and, like, you know, you look at this guy, and you know, he's got a family to take care of. And, you know, a lot of them do. So not only is he just for himself, but, you know, he's got to take care of his family, and, and he wants to um, give them what they need, and a lot of times you got to pay for uh, for tuition if he's in a um, certain countries. You might have to, uh, you know, you have to pay for their, their tuition, whatever schools they're going to. You've got, you know, just all the costs that go along with having a kid, and uh, you know, Probably taking care local of his officials. Wife. <laughs> Yeah. And so, and like with this guy, he's, his kids are little. And so, um, you know, chances are if, if his, you've got one or one of two things, either she's a stay home mom because any salary that she could make is probably about what they'd be paying in daycare. Um, or else you got the daycare costs if, if she can find something that costs significant or that pays significantly more. Um, and, and that's a decision that they make. It, you know, where and a lot of them uh, would rather have them be a stay-at-home mom, especially if they're in another country. You know, it's kind of a strange thing that if they're not in there all that long, and depending, you know, it can be hard on the kids. So, you know, they're already on a very limited income, and then to cut that down, you know, it's definitely something to think about. If when you think about um, how much money that your congregation or you yourself uh, give to support. Uh, various missions and uh and you know and not only individual missionaries but this is also going to apply to uh mission organizations um i actually happen to be wearing my orphan grain train uh t-shirt tonight and uh which is part of Lutheran Hour ministries and they do some really great work too there's i mean there's a bazillion different uh charities out there organizations uh mission organizations and things um and uh, anybody that does anything outside the country, uh, they're going to be hurting. And with with the cost of fuel going up, that's going to affect uh, being able to ship uh, supplies to you know through different uh, relief organizations. It's going to cost more to ship it. Uh, you know, there's just all these different factors to think about. So uh, you know, if, if you can spare a little extra and you know, so oh, pastor preaching about money. Um, but, you know, if you can spare a little extra for those organizations, 
Boy, they sure would appreciate it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, here's here's the difference. I'm not asking you to give us money. <laughs> we do this for free. This is this is what we do for fun. So um, we don't need you to pay us to have fun. But you know, there's there's plenty of people out there that are that are really struggling. So if you can help them out, please do. Mm-hmm. Hi, re- this last story really is depressing. <laughs> <laughs> um, that scientists uh, for the first time have uh, genetically engineered a human embryo um, and uh, apparently this was kind of a I don't know I mean it's this was a non-viable embryo because it had extra chromo- chromosomes but even that I, I, I question Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you know, some people would consider Down syndrome uh, non-viable. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, what do you think is the main purpose of doing amniocentesis? It's to find out if the baby's going to be born, uh, quote-unquote, abnormal, to give the the mother a, a choice of abortion. Um, because your baby's not going to be perfectly healthy. Now, I, you know, I, I'm sure that there's... There are very leg- legitimate reasons to do amniocentesis, you know, in, or, in order to um, to make sure you have the necessary treatments in place and things like that when the baby is born. But more often than not, that's not why it's used. And um, you know, the the simple reality is that people find out that their child is going to have some kind of disability, um, and they decide that. For some reason, it would be better to kill the baby instead of get them the treatment that they need or, um, you know, have them adopted by a family that actually could provide that treatment if you can't. Sorry, now I'm getting nasty. <laughs> I'm just ornery tonight. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I... <laughs> yeah. yeah. The fact that they're talking already about genetically modifying, you know, um, gets really scary because now we're starting to talk about, um, well, the whole area of eugenics again. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, You know, and here, you know, we talk about, this is, you know, there's a society where some people are genetically enriched and others are, you know, not, and the the enriched ones are are superior and the un-ones are are inferior, Um, and it really gets to be uh, a very, very ethically, question, ethically uh, uh, challenged thing area. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you know, I can understand wanting to, you know, if if they could find a way to sort of cure some genetic diseases, um, you know, and then. You know, extend people's lives, improve people's lives, you know, things like that. I can understand the desire to do that. And, you know, I'm all for that. But, boy, you know, you don't know what effect you're going to have on somebody when you start changing their genes. And, you know, that just makes me nervous because, you know, this is like a, a permanent medication. You know, you take mm-hmm. medication, there's side effects. Right. You know, and it can be something as simple as Tylenol, you know, might make you nauseous or, you know, or or whatever else. Okay. What happens when you actually change a person's DNA? Uh, You know, especially when you're changing stuff that you know, you know, on this isn't just like some little mutation on a, um, on a a small piece of, you know, so-called junk DNA. Uh, which may or may not be junk. They just don't know what it does yet. Um, but I don't know. See, I, I've never been a big fan of uh, genetic manipulation of food products either. You know, when you start taking fish genes and insert them into corn, but I, you know, what's the long-term effect of that? Of you know, of, of eating. Fish corn, you know. <laughs> what, 
like, well, you know, it's been studied for, you know, six months and there are no long term effects until, you know, 30 years from now and people start growing a third eye. But <laughs> that's extreme. But, you know, the point is, there's a lot of stuff that we're doing um, medically, genetically, you know, all kinds of stuff that and we just don't know. And when you start messing with people's bodies, it's just, you know, it keeps ramming back that line from Jurassic Park where he says, you were so, uh, uh, what's the line? You were so anxious to prove that you could do it, you never stopped to think whether or not you should. You know, and, and it seems like genetics is the place more than any other field where there's that just huge push to see can we do it and and not stop and ask should we is this really a road that we want to go down you yep. know you open the barn door it's hard to get the cows or pigs or horses wherever whatever state you happen to be from uh back in the barn so you know every time you you hear about this this next step and it's yeah, you know, it's that whole slippery slope kind of feel. You go, well, it's just this one little thing, and then, oh, well, it's just this one more little thing. That's how cults work, by the way. It's called brainwashing. But this is like cultural br- brainwashing. Oh, well, it's just this one little thing. You know, one more? Well, what direction are you going? Well, you're you're not ready for that yet. <laughs> so. No, that's a good question. It's Yeah, I think you raised some good points there. I have nothing more to add. I think if you haven't said it in there, it doesn't need to be said. Okay. And speaking of genetics, take a look at this guy. You know, we always talk about separated at birth and all that kind of stuff. Okay. If Michael J. Fox and John Edwards had a kid, he would look like that. I was thinking John Edwards. I did did, did think John Edwards, especially the hair. Um. Yep. So. But see, my, my first thought, I looked at it and I went, Alex P. Keaton. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, you know, the irony of the, of the, the Michael J. Fox resemblance and Michael J. Fox being such a huge fan of embryonic stem cell research. Um, you know, I just thought it was kind of ironic. So what do you think? If you, uh, have a comment, you can let us know at podcast at, no, uh, crossfeed, a podcast at crossfeednews.com. That's it. Yeah. Um, and once again, podcast at crossfeednews.com. Or if you are just an iTunes, you can click on the screen and it'll take you right to our comment page. Uh, or I don't know if our phone number is still working or not. Have you tried so. it this week? <laughs> no. No, because if I do, that'll activate it again. <laughs> So uh, <laughs> we won't even we won't even mention the, the phone number, but uh, or if you're watching this on YouTube or something, you can put down there the com- on the comment box, and and we'll and we'll get an, an email notification that your comments there. That's how I got the guy saying, you know, I hate Christians. Um, you know, <clears throat> that was a very in depth, thoughtful comment. You know, I just, just <laughs> was impressed that it, you know the 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 the. the, the uh, the insight. The insight, yeah. It was just so insightful. So. <laughs> oh, one more thing. Next week, uh, Memorial Day weekend, is our two-year anniversary. I believe we've been doing this for two years and nobody's lynched us yet. But... <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, uh, so no, but we can go. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> All right. So, I, I asked for this last year, and we didn't get it. So, I'm going to ask for it again. Here is what we want for our anniversary gift. We want you to go to iTunes, or if you're not an iTunes person, the the problem with iTunes is in order for you to to like sign up there, uh, in order to like go to the podcast directory and stuff, you have to give them your credit card. So some people don't like iTunes because of that, because uh, they want you to to then be able to purchase music and stuff. So, But um, 
if you know if you don't want to do that, or you know some people just don't have a credit card, um, you could go to podcastalley.com or uh, podcastpickle.com or any of a bazillion different podcast directories and leave a review. And let us know what you think, positive, negative. I don't care. Um, we like positive ones better, but uh, but go and leave a review and and tell us what you think. And um, but tell everybody else what you think too that way. And because right now we've got last I checked one review on the audio and no reviews on the video, and we've been doing this for two years. So uh, we'd love to have some reviews up there uh, just to let people know. Because otherwise, you know, people go and they they see our um, they see the show listing and they see no reviews listed and they go, nobody's listening to this. Nobody's watching this. And um, so if, if you're listening or watching, uh, please go and review. And we would be very thankful for that um, that anniversary gift. We really appreciate it. So with that, everybody, we pray that God would give you a good week. Um, and we will be talking to you then next week. Same bat time, yep. same bat channel. Good night, everybody. God bless.